much like a carnivore diet, I think that as you start an animal-based diet, you should think about meat and protein first. That's the easiest macronutrient. By macronutrient, we mean protein, carbohydrates, fat. Let's start with protein. I think that the bottom of the protein requirements for optimal human health are one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Another way to think about this is for every 100 pounds that you weigh, think about eating one pound of meat. Now, for those who are obese, you can use your goal weight to make these calculations. For those who are at a healthy weight, you use your actual full weight. Now, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is the bottom end. I'm 165 to 170 pounds as a 5'10 male, meaning the bottom end of my protein requirements is 160 to 170 grams per day, which is 1.6 to 1.7 pounds of meat. I feel best when I eat two pounds of meat and I get a few ounces of organs per day, meaning I'm probably eating 220, if not 230 to 240 grams of protein per day as a 165 pound male. What if you're a 110 pound woman? 110 grams of protein is the bottom end for you, meaning one pound of meat, 100 grams, plus a little bit from organs will get you there. You might be a little better with more, but for most women, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is the goal. What if you are my 115 pound mother who's 72 years old? Again, critical to get enough protein for proper bone health, proper muscle and tendon health, proper resilience to injury as you age. I was just talking to my mom today and she said she can't eat a pound of meat per day. And I'm thinking, how can you not eat a pound of meat per day? It's hard for her as a 72 year old, 115, 120 pound woman to eat a pound of meat per day. But I think that her goal should be that and probably a little more. What if you are a 200 pound man? Then you're going to need then you're going to need to eat more protein than me. Probably 200 grams of protein at the minimum, maybe up to 250 or 260 per day for optimal health. Now, I was thinking about this recently and the creatine piece of this equation came into my mind and I thought it all made a lot of sense. Creatine is a molecule that is synthesized in the liver and the kidneys, but only about one gram of day of creatine is made by our body. Ideal creatine intakes for humans are probably around three to five or even upwards of five grams per day, depending on your body weight. For a 105 pound female, three grams of creatine per day is probably okay. 170 to 180 pound males, five grams of creatine is probably optimal. 250 gram, 250 pound males plus you're probably looking at seven to eight grams of creatine for optimal performance. And what does creatine do? Well, it serves as a phosphate donor in the muscles. 95% of creatine is in the muscles and it serves as a phosphate repository and donor for ATP, that is our energy currency. Now that all sounds well and good, but if you look at the actual research on the performance benefits of creatine, they are enormous. Many people would agree that there is no substance studied more than creatine, and no substance which has better performance enhancing effects than creatine. This is a study titled the International Society of Sports Nutrition Position Stand, the Safety and Efficacy of Creatine Supplementation in Exercise, Sport, and Medicine. This is, I believe, from 2017 in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. They go on to say, Studies have consistently shown that creatine supplementation increases intramuscular creatine concentrations, which may help explain the observed improvement in high intensity exercise performance, leading to greater training adaptations. In addition to athletic and exercise improvement, research has shown that creatine supplementation may enhance post-exercise recovery, injury prevention, thermal regulation, rehabilitation, concussion and or spinal cord neuroprotection, Additionally, a number of clinical applications of creatine supplementation have been studied involving neurodegenerative diseases, e.g. muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, diabetes, osteoarthritis, fibromyalgia, aging, brain and heart ischemia, adolescent depression, and pregnancy. These studies provide a large body of evidence that creatine can not only improve exercise performance, 
but can play a role in preventing and or reducing the severity of injury, enhancing rehabilitation from injuries, and helping athletes tolerate heavy training loads. I don't know how much more you could sing the praises of creatine based on that abstract. This study goes on to show the creatine phosphate shuttle system, the essentially the physiology of creatine in the mitochondria and in the cytosol of cells, moving phosphate groups around, being donors for phosphate, and talks about muscle total creatine stores and compares our sad friends vegetarians with normal creatine loading or creatine loading with the with or without carbohydrates and protein from a certain study that is noted here in the graphic shown on the video portion of this podcast. But as you can see, vegetarians average around 100 millimole per kilogram dry weight creatine. Normal people, quote unquote normal, who I would also define as deficient are about 120 millimole. Creatine loading is 140. That's where you want to be. And then creatine loading with carbohydrate or carbohydrate and protein is even higher at 155. But I think there's a good argument to be made that the higher you can get your total creatine stores in your muscle, the better. You want to be at 140 millimole. How do you get there? Like I said, you can do 30 days of creatine loading with three grams per day for a 100 to 110 pound individual. You can do five grams per day for somebody that's about my size, 165 pounds. Or if you're around 240, 250 pounds, you might need to go to seven or eight grams of creatine per day. Well, think about this. When we are imagining what the optimal amount of protein intake for humans is, isn't it interesting that one kilogram, that is 2.2 pounds of meat per day, is five grams of creatine? So even though I don't do creatine loading, I'm getting five grams of creatine per day by eating essentially one kilogram of meat from mostly meat and some organs per day in my diet. I'm already maximizing my creatine stores by getting to that a little more than one gram of protein per pound of body weight threshold. If you are much below that, you are falling short of optimal creatine stores and compromising performance, recovery, potential rehabilitation in the setting of an injury, and potentially compromising long-term longevity and aging. Optimal creatine levels should be at the center of every healthy diet. Why supplement with creatine when there is a clear indication here that humans benefit from eating around one kilogram of meat and organs per day if you are around 170 pounds as a male. If you are a lighter female or a lighter male, Maybe three is fine and you can eat less, but it all scales to the slightly more than one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day metric that I mentioned earlier. The ideal for most people is probably 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Again, as I mentioned, if you are obese and looking to lose weight, think about your goal body weight. Say you're a 300 pound male and you're looking to lose 80 pounds, then you are essentially eating creatine as a 220 pound male, which would be slightly more than five grams per day. And again, using the formula I mentioned earlier, one gram of protein per pound of body weight will give you slightly more than two pounds of meat per day, which will give you that amount of creatine. How interesting is that? That it's kind of built into nature. And now we know retrospectively that eating that amount of meat also optimizes your creatine levels. 